Well, I want to talk about the involvement of the bayonet. Um, this is actually an M1 Garand. Uh, this bayonet is really for the 1903 um, Springfield, the one that was carried in World War One, but it actually was used in World War Two. The one was World War Two, might have been about up to there. Um, now the technology of this actually is pretty damn simple, you know. Actually, a knife, if you can get closer to somebody, is more lethal than a round from a bullet for loaded ammunition. But most cases, um, the thing is though. Before the obvious thing is before the uh, event of semi-automatic rifles and things and full automatic rifles These are all both semi-automatic. This is actually a Colt Sporter uh, It does not even have the bayonet lug on it, but I'm just have the bayonet on here for demonstration purposes The lug would be right there um, But when he uh, before the advent of you know fast repeating rifles uh, there was always the bayonet charge when people ran out of ammunition or um, you know, it was a last ditch effort to nail the enemy, that type of thing. And, you know, to tell you the truth, if you're actually in a bayonet fight with something, you'd rather rather have this probably than that one. This one is, God, what is that? Crap, I'm doing this right off. Is that the M7 bayonet? Boy, you know what? That's going back a couple decades. So if I said that wrong, sorry, okay? Um... It's kind of weird how I remember a lot of stuff like the six truth bleeding steps and steps in a five paragraph order, SMEAC and BAMSIS and all that. You know, right off the top of my head without even freaking looking at it. But <laughs> what can I say? Um, the uh, the thing is with the M1 Grand, that, that really kind of um, took a little, little impetus out of the bayonet because of, you know, you got an eight shot capacity, you know, largely unless the Germans were using their little well for the longer range full full size uh, weapon uh, the Germans were using I think a five shot magazine and their eight millimeter Mausers now the one thing is though with the bayonet when it came on the M16 this is an AR-15 civilian war, uh, version sporter is um, the, the barrel on these things was flimsier now this one's got a heavy barrel on it and what used to happen with the A1 was the barrel used to get a little bit of a bend in it. If you use that bayonet to stick somebody and you're, you'd be shooting this way or something going, you know. Uh, so when it, later on when it came out with the A2, they made the barrel heavier from here to here, partly because of the bayonet, but also partly due to the uh, bullet whip. Now, this is kind of crazy how some of the uh, planners in the military... Now, not our military, but this is the Austrian military. Um, like, yeah, you got a bayonet. It comes with pre pretty much every rifle you can pretty much put a bayonet on. If you, Well, even this one, if you want to put a bayonet lug, you could add that onto there. Or you could change the upper or change the barrel. Actually, got the stuff to change the barrels and stuff everywhere. I'm out. It's a special wrench. Um, then I got the stuff to check the headspace. But when it's uh, in Austria, when it came out with the steer aug, the bullpup, I don't have one of those things. That thing's actually a damn good weapon, though. Um, they did not have provisions for a bayonet lug because they considered it arc. They considered the bayonet to be archaic and barbaric. That's quoting right off the damn stuff. Um, it's kind of weird how I remember this stuff from like ages ago because I haven't really looked at the, what I learned a uh, million. And actually, I did know my stuff extremely well before. I want to brag about it, but I did. Um, but uh, the technology has evolved from these short bayonets. Now, I can tell you one thing. I mean, these short bayonets like this to these long bayonets like they had in World War One. The one in World War Two was about this long, but this was used in World War Two, although it was originally used on the uh, the 1903 Springfield, the bolt action. Um, now, I want to say one thing, you know, this actually is a pretty damn good rifle, um, the M1 Grand. A lot of people ignore this rifle with all the high-tech plastic, you know, they got, you know, this is, what is this? It's not, I think the A1 was fiberglass, this is high-impact plastic reinforced with fiberglass or something. That's what the hell the difference between A1 and A2 is. Now they got the A3 to A4, shorter carbine versions. Um... The difference, though, I can tell you right now, um, this round is 30 out six. 
is probably your most versatile round going. I mean, yeah, you can, you know, when people look at the books, I'm kind of digressing on something besides bayonets, but when people look at the books and they look at the ballistics on the 30 odd 6 they'll say, oh, well, it's it's kind of large, it's a large round, it's, well, it's about that big, I should have one out here right now, but uh, it's, um, it's, it's not as powerful as, say, the 7mm Magnum, Remington Magnum, it's not as good as a, maybe a 708, you know, 708 is another one, 30 out 6, or 706, whatever you call that. Um, yeah, 708, they got a 708, which is a 7mm and a 308 um, configuration. But the thing is, the popularity of the 30 out 6 has been around so damn long. Um, you can pretty much load it any way you want. You could even put um, below, you could go from 110 grains all the way up to 220 grains. And. It's about the most powerful round somebody can shoot without freaking really whomping on their shoulder too bad. Because when you start shooting these like uh, 338, you know, uh, magnums, <laughs> 300 win mags, you really feel it, you know. So, but it still does every damn thing. But um, you know, I almost uh, I'm going to tell you one thing: the bayonet probably be should. You know, I don't know what the hell you could do when you're hunting sometimes because you know the rules are getting kind of crazy. But if I was going to hunt for like a freaking bear and I had my M1 Garand with me, I probably would have the bayonet with me because you never know, you never know. Um, the actual legend from the old K-Bar, uh, K-A-B-A-R caps from the USMC, the story goes that this guy's rifle giant jammed. He was an old trapper, and but that was before they had the... Uh, name K bar but there the knife was out and he used the knife to kill a bear and the letter the, the, the handwritten letter was not very legible they could make out the words K A and B A R of the the phrase kill a bear so K bar actually stands for kill a bear <laughs> but you know I always look at it this way with the uh bayonets because um a lot of people don't realize um and I guess I should digress on this. You know, it's probably a lot easier to kill a human than it is an animal in many cases, even if in a, an animal that weighs, weighs much less than a uh, human. They're much, much harder, hardier. You know, the 5.56 five, is designed to take somebody, you know, I don't like, just want to talk about this too much because maybe it won't be advertiser friendly, but it's designed to take somebody out. It's not. Just, it's actually more lethal than an AK-47. I went over that on videos. It doesn't break bricks as well. It doesn't deflect on brushes it deflects on brush more so than AK-47 but um, it's more lethal on a human body due to the 2000 the, the going so fast it actually explodes the human cells but uh, a lot of times there's problems with rifles you know the AK is actually more um, robust far as handling dirt so that's a lot of times the situation you might want to have that bayonet plus it's quiet you know I guess this is all mil spec shit I'm telling you here but Probably shouldn't be freaking saying this, but uh, that's the whole idea behind a bayonet. It's quiet. It's also your last-ditch weapon. You know, for some reason, Austria would steer Aug. They come out and they say the bayonet's barpaic, barbaric and archaic, archaic and barbaric, and I don't understand why. I mean, uh, the whole admission is to uh, disable, kill the enemy, or whatever, you know. <laughs> it's not... You know, how the hell are you going to do that, right? Without being barbaric and archaic, right? For crying out loud, you don't want to do nice, neat holes. It's not no such thing as nice, neat holes. I don't know. Makes me wonder about Austria. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, I like this M1 Grand with this World War One bayonet. And um, I tell you the truth, if uh, I never really, you know, I was deer hunting and things like that well, quite a bit. But I never went bear hunting. But if I ever went bear hunting for some kind of bear that was gonna could kill my ass. I probably would take this with me. I don't think I'd have it on a rifle, but I think I would take this damn thing with me. Because um, this thing, I think, would be more effective than even a K-Bar. You never know what could possibly happen with a semi-automatic. This thing seemed to be ultra-reliable, but then again, you never know. You never know. That's why bayonets in warfare are very important. They're not very, very useful as far as actually a, a knife, you know. And this... This, you know, as far as a knife that you use for camping, you know, these are pretty thick. Um, they got the blood groove on them. You press this in, and then this comes out. 
It's got a little latch there. There's the lug. This doesn't have a lug on it. It just doesn't have a lug on it. I just have it, you know, laying on there. But it has the clips right here where it goes on. It's probably, I think it's called the M7 bayonet. Do I remember that right? <laughs> I forget. I don't remember. This one, these are sharp too. But, you know, this also, this is the blood groove. So, I can tell you though, there's even, you know, not that I got involved with this kind of crap, but I've seen, well, a friend of mine, to tell you the truth, he was uh, bow hunting, and, um, what the hell was that, um, a hog, those damn things are like vicious, you know, big one, wild hog, wild boar, that's what it was, um, he was tracking it, and the damn thing tracked back at him, and luckily, when he realized he caught it at the last, with a bow, he shot it in the head. He was lucky. He would have been probably wiped out because a wild boar is pretty damn vicious. But that's one reason I think if you're going to have a civilian, why you would have this, something like this. Well, I guess it could be, you know, if you're in the house and you got something like this, it's pretty good. You know, somebody busts in the door, you know. But that's the, that's the blood groove on it. It's designed actually to kill stuff. That's really what it's for. Um, and this, this one... It's a little, almost a little like the K-Bar, a um, little thinner, and um, it doesn't have the blood groove. But this has the blood groove, so in other words, because you, you get that suction, you can't pull it out. Gross, right? Should I talk about this on YouTube? I don't know. But I'm telling you what the hell, they, that's what the hell, why they made it like that, okay? Um, but to uh, tell you the truth, if... Uh, you know, if I was hunting some kind of game that was going to hunt me back, possibly, I think I would take this, too. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. Although, I think ultra-reliable over here would do the job. I don't have any freaking, um, you know, 300 wind mags or nothing. I think this is the most powerful thing I got. Well, except for the 50 cal, but I don't think you can hunt with that. Maybe you could. Elephant. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's about... This thing I like, though. It's very simple to operate. And... Uh, the 5.56, five, not really a hunting round, but you can always change the upper on it, and you can put, like, something else, like the Grendel, which will freaking work great, which I have a Grendel. The 6.5 Grendel, which fires a 6.5 Swedish. And that's a great thing, too. But, you know, if you're hunting, you know, maybe the bayonet is not a bad thing to take with you, because it's not really something that you would use for it's not the best blade in the world for actually gutting the game because it's not like curved up like that because it, it's, it's supposed to actually well, it'll still work though you're supposed to go up and under you know to cut like that to get to you know to field dress the game and this will still work though this will still work and uh, it's got two edges on it and uh, two edges are pretty important because sometimes you, you could be screwing up this one edge and get, get hit some bone or something that's messed up and you can always go to the other edge. But uh, the theory behind bayonets is kind of went by the wayside a lot and they don't actually teach it in the military. It, not that much. It's more emphasis on marksmanship and tactics and maneuvers. It's not so much, you know, there is, I mean, it is taught, but it's not like emphasized the way it used to be. Back World War One, World War Two, they're always emphasizing the, the bayonet thrust all the time. I mean, they do teach it. I mean, it's taught all the time. But in real life, you probably won't use it that often. And uh, you're not going to do a fixed bayonet charge today, pretty much. So, but that doesn't mean uh, it's... It didn't get outdated because it's barbaric and archaic. It, it works. It's just that they, they, they've they come to where they, there's a lot more ammunition available, a lot more semi, there's a lot more, you know, high-powered rifles available that have extra high capacity. So, you know, that's the deal. And on this thing, actually, I don't even know what the hell scope I got in here. What is it? Uh, this damn thing's loose, too. I should just tighten it. <laughs> oh, God. That's freaking wood. That's that's killer right there, right? Not sure what the hell I got on there. It's a probably it, it is a fairly good scope. I just need to tighten this down. This uh, this thing over here that they were the scope mounts to. Um, it's not it's not the scope itself is not mount loose to the mounts. But I want to talk about something else here real briefly. I'm when I got this out. You don't use this as a carrying handle ever, ever. 
I mean, they call this a carrying handle. You don't ever use it as a carrying handle. You use your your pistol grip as your carrying handle because you have everything. All your controls right here at your fingertips. You can go right off safe. You know, go you know from from uh, safe to fire. Of course, this is semi-automatic. It doesn't go any further than that. And you're ready. Your fingers right there by the trigger. Uh, you don't ever use that, but as a carrying handle. I know the Australian steer uh, aug bullpup is. You know, to teach everybody to use it as a carrying handle. But it, it is a great weapon. But if I ever got another weapon, like a 5.56 five, in a bullpup, I'd probably get the Israeli Tavor. But I'm not going to get that because, you know, I really don't really need it. But it's it, it, to me, that's that one really did take a, a big leap up from the uh, Americans, the bullpup that the Israelis got, the Tavor. But, um,. You know, I figured I don't really need it, so I'm not going to get it. But, you know, I just figured I'd tell you about, here's the differences from World War One and also World War Two. But the World War Two one was about up to there, but this was used in World War Two. And here you got from, like, Vietnam to the 80s to the 90s, I don't know, probably beyond that. Big difference in, in the way they were. They're really moving away from the bayonet, but the bayonet is a very, very, very handy tool anyway. It's not a bad knife. I mean, it's uh, it's designed for to be a bayonet, but it's also a knife, and it's per fairly thick. You can see that on it. It's about as thick as a K-bar. It's not it's not weak, and uh, it's got the, the type of handle on it you can hammer with it too. Right here, see? It's got steel. This thing don't. This is wood. <laughs> a lot of stuff in World War One was greatly improved in World War Two. I can tell you that right now. It's like from the. Uh, Bolt action Springfield 1903 to the M1 Grand. So, just figure I want to put this out here real quick. You know, point of interest, whatever. And if you want any comments, fine. If you want to see anything else on videos, I probably should get out there in the range and start seeing this is tight now. It was just dumbass. I didn't believe that was loose. <laughs> but it is sighted in. When you take this off of here, when you take this off of here, it'll sight back in. This also has the uh, Picatinny rail which is under this carrying handle you unscrew this you got the picatinny rail you can put your optics but i don't really use these um optics that as much when i was firing a lot shooting a lot i used the iron sights i think using these is cheating they're like a luxury this is actually a pretty good scope though i don't know what the hell it is though i think i got it yeah, we'll get some light on here you probably saw it in the camera no problem no, it's a it's a weaver. No, it is a good one. <laughs> it is a good one. I think I did put something good on that sucker, man. <laughs> so anyway, anyway, uh, yeah. Um, that's just a quick update on this. But uh, you know, the way they're going right now, I think they're probably going to use uh, scalar technology to incinerate people into like a crispy fry, and it just be nothing right there, and and that'll be humane, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's like they tell people, hey, well, it's just like anything, you know? They want everything, like, to look really good in words. And it's almost like in the military, they want you to be a freaking total killing machine, but when you're off duty, you want to be Mr. Gentleman that helps uh, little kids and old ladies cross streets, you know, at the same time. You're supposed to click it off, right? You know how that works? I got a pretty good way of clicking it off because I, I actually... Uh, Stay laid back and roll with the punches, you know. <laughs> That's the way I am. But, uh, yeah, bayonets, they're pretty cool. They're pretty good to have. Um, I probably would recommend this one more than anything. The only thing is, is if you got something like this, you know, and it's in your car, and you know, you get stopped by you know, the law enforcement, they'll say, Bleh. you know. But it depends, it depends, because... You know, you act like a normal person, you might be okay, you know. But uh, these bayonets are pretty damn handy. They are. They're not bad. They're not bad as knives. This one is not handy as a knife, obviously, because it's too damn long. But like I said, if I was going wild boar hunting or uh, freaking big-ass bear hunting, I can tell you, there's a guy, I, I read a story. I know, I told you a story that I know about a friend of mine. He, he fired at the wild, wild boar with the bow, and luckily he got him in the head when the thing was backtracking on him. But I've read stories where people had 44 Magnum pistols 
and they emptied both 44, two of them, two guys, they emptied both 44 Magnum pistols into the bear, and the bear still killed him. And the bear died, and all the shots hit the bear, and still killed him. So if you had something like this, I'd, I'd have that too, besides the pistol in this. <laughs> so, you know, there, there could be a hunting application for that too, right? Fix bayonets on a charging rhino or something, right? There you go.